Well, turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 43. Chapter 43. You know... The Lord spoke to my spirit earlier in the week, and He does from time to time. And, you know, uh, I've witnessed a lot of things this past couple of weeks, and as I was laying in bed the other night, it just, in Revelations, it talks about the last two witnesses that will come down, chapter 11, and He said, tell the world, don't let those last two witnesses be their witness. Boy, and that really, that really hit me hard. Don't let them be the last two witnesses that you hear. Don't let them be the ones that we have to hear. So after reading throughout the week, I got up this morning and it was still there. So I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> but the title of the day is Witness Protection. Witness protection. Isaiah chapter 43, starting in verse 5, says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witness that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say it is truth. Verse 10 says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have sh showed when there was no strange God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was I am He, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? He said, Ye are my witnesses, and my servant, whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. I have chosen you that you may believe, that you may understand. Are we true witnesses to the Lord? Are we serving Him as He's called us to do? Do, do we truly know and believe and understand that He is? He said, I've chosen you. He said, I've called you out of the world. Do you believe that I am who that I say I am? But before there was a God, He was God. And He is God. And there will be no God after Him. And there was no God before Him. And He has chosen each and every one of us. Each and every person that will call on the name of the Lord. He has set you apart. For whomsoever will. For whomsoever will. And the Bible says, For whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. But if you've called on His name, there's something that takes place in your life when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. You're a changed person. You put off the old man. You take on the new man. You're following Christ. But the world has taken it and bundled it up with everything in the world and you don't know what you've got anymore. Your salvation relies between you and Jesus Christ. Christ said, Search the Scriptures for in them you think that you have everlasting life and they are they which speak of me. 
Search the Scriptures. We have to know the church is illiterate because people won't read their Bibles. People won't get on their knees and humble themselves before Almighty God and ask Him, Lord God, please reveal Yourself to me because I want to believe. I want to believe. And I want to be a true witness for you. I want people to see you living in me. He is our protection. He is our high tower. And we are His witness. We are to be bearing fruits. Fruits meet for repentance. Fruits meet that God can look down and say, These are my chosen. Do we understand that for by grace you are saved through faith that not of yourself it is a gift of God. You don't go out seeking to be saved. It's God's grace that saves you. Amen. It's the faith that you have to step forward and to move on when God is calling you into His fold. When that Spirit of God is working in you, you've got to have faith to step forward. When God's calling you to be a witness in someone's life, you've got to have that faith to step forward. When God's calling you into His service, you've got to have faith to serve. We've got to have faith. Because it's by His grace that we were saved. By His grace, not of works, the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, lest any man should boast. It ain't nothing what we do. We don't decide today that, well, I'm just going to get saved today. It's a working, it's a continual working in your body, in your spirit, in your mind. It's a continual renewing of your mind each and every day. Because the world changes every day and we've got to adjust. But we've got a, a steadfast word here. We've got a foundation that cannot be moved if we'd stick in the Word of God. But the world wants to take the Word of God and twist it around to make it fit their needs. Well, that ain't what the Word of God's for. We're supposed to fit God's needs. He set the guidelines so that we can walk in them, that we can be servants unto Him. You go get a job and you do what you go go about up. Go try to do something that you ain't supposed to do at your job. You lose it, don't you? You get fired. But God said, "This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it." We're saved by faith, by grace through faith. That not of ourselves; it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship, created, created in Christ Jesus. Unto what? Unto good works which God hath before ordained. He called you out from the beginning that we should walk in them. That we should walk in them. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's our faith that sets us apart from the world. It's our faith that gives, the ability, gives us the ability to walk that we may bear witness unto God through our faith. Turn to the book of Titus. First, second, that's my only first. Second, Timothy, Titus. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Starting in verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Hath appeared to all men. What have they done with it? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's our witness. We're looking for Him. We ought to be living soberly righteously and godly lives 
looking to the author and finisher of our salvation, to of our faith. As our witness, people see that. That's our witness, that you're a child of God. Verse 14 says, Who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. It's not the church's job to tell you what you want to hear. It's not your job to tell everybody what they want to hear. It's your job to tell the truth. Amen. It's your job to tell the truth. You know, Steve said it many times. You talk about the, the eye on the oven. You know, you don't want your kid to be offended if you holler at them, but if they're going for the hot burner on the stove, you're going to stop them and you're going to snatch them away from it. That's our job. When people are doing wrong, when people are going about it wrong, we ought to, in meekness and in fear, tell them the truth. Not trying to condemn them or judge them, but in meekness and in fear, telling the truth. So many people in the church want to be judgmental of everybody. Sin is sin. And if those around us are doing wrong, it's our job to tell them that they're doing wrong. Satan is a deceiver. And he will deceive your children. He'll deceive you if you'll give him one ounce of your time. Chapter 3, verse 1 says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Boy, that's hard sometimes. Showing all meekness to all men. What did Christ do when they were plucking out His beard, ripping His garments off His body? He stood there and he took it. When they beat him and he bled, he stood there in meekness and he took it. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, verse 3, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after... That the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared. You hear? But after. But now. But now. We were all these things. We were hateful. We were full of pride. We were doing everything unrighteous and ungodly. Oh, but we good old, we good folks. We good old boy. He good old boy. Good old boys go to hell every day. Good people go to hell all the time. It ain't nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ that sets you apart from this unrighteous, wicked, godless world that we live in. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. After the love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, verse 8, And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. you got to maintain those good works. No matter how bad we feel, no matter how beat down we are, we're children of Almighty God. And we've got to get over whatever hurdles are in our life that's dragging us down and be focused on serving Him because we are His witness. We are His witness. No matter what comes down the pike, we're going to be striving to serve God. We're going to deal with these problems as they come, but we're going to continue to serve God in doing so. Not being hateful, not drunkards, not sluggards, not proud boasters, but in meekness and in fear, humbling ourselves before Him so that He may receive the glory. That's our witness. That is our witness. 
put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our job. Jesus said, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. Philippians chapter 2. I'm just going to read you a little something. How do we know that we're a witness? How do people see that we're a witness? Just like Christ said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Philippians 2. Verse 2 says, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each other esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on things of others. Verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So if we're spending all our time focused on ourselves, doing for ourselves, there ain't nothing wrong with taking care of yourself and taking care of your house, but you've got to be looking unto others. We've got to be caring for each other. Putting others before ourselves. Boy, that's hard sometimes. We've got a lot of things to do. But we put others before ourselves. That's a witness unto God. That's a witness that you're a Christian. That you have love for the brethren. Love for one another. Proverbs 14 and 25 says, A true witness delivereth souls. A true witness delivereth souls. But a deceitful witness speaketh lies. Speaketh lies. Proverbs 19 and 9 says, A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. But a true witness delivers souls. We live in a world full of lies. We live in a world full of hypocrisy. We live in a world full of false witnesses. We live in a world full of deceit. And where does it all start? It starts right here. It starts, it starts with each individual. It starts in the church. You look at the church. The church isn't a church. The church isn't a house of God anymore. But the church has turned into a spiritual cesspool. Full of unclean spirits that have come in. Why? Because the, the body of Christ has failed to be a witness unto Him. We've failed our jobs as a church telling the truth. Telling the truth. The truth don't always feel good. The truth don't always puff you up, build you up. Sometimes the truth convicts and makes you realize how wretched and unrighteous and unholy you are. And that's what the church's job is. We're not promised riches in this world, but we're promised sufferings. Witness, Brother Ken elaborated on earlier in the New Testament trend, is a martyr. Someone that dies for their faith. We've died to ourselves. That Christ could move in, that Christ could come in and live through us. And bear witness to the Father. But the church has failed its job because we're too worried about pleasing everybody else. We don't want to offend anybody because they may quit coming. Or we don't want to offend somebody because i got to work with them every day. We can't be, a scared, be scared of offending anybody. But we have to offend in the Word of God. When we offend people, we sin. But the Word of God does the offending. Jesus said, Marvel not that they hate you. They don't hate you, they hate Him. He said, they hate me. It's the truth. The truth, the word of truth. Church is full of fornication, idolatry, covetousness, pride. When people come in seeking the Lord that are lost, they stumble. Because on the front of the building it says church. 
On the sign, it may say something about salvation. But when they walk in the doors, all they see is hypocrisy and sin. People hanging out in bars. Well, I was at the bar with that guy the other night. What's he doing here? Or I know so-and-so sleeping with so-and-so over here. And they all bring this sin into the church. And there's going to be a purge. There's going to be a cleansing. Because God's going to take the church, the real church, the real body of Christ is going to be pulled up out of this wicked world and all those that have come in seeking and thinking that they had salvation are going to be sitting there on their laws and on their thumbs going, well, I thought I was saved. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ with thy mouth and believe in thine heart thou shalt be saved. There's nobody confessing. There's nobody professing that Jesus is, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He was born of a virgin. That He is coming back. That He has said, I have gone to prepare a place and I will receive you to Myself. There's going to be another life after this life. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And those that go to hell are going to be cast into the eternal lake of fire where the worm dies not. But we're so educated. We can choose our own religions. We can choose our own salvation. We can mingle, we can mingle Baal with God. But no, you cannot. No, you cannot. You can't be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. You can't drink of the Lord's cup and the cup of devils. It's one way. One faith. One baptism. One Jesus Christ that died on the cross for everybody's sins. But nobody wants to hear it because it's a bloody cross. Nobody wants to hear it. We want to go worship things that make us feel good in this life. I want to worship a God that I know that's going to deliver me from this life. But as it starts at the church, it trickles down into our families and to our homes and from our homes to our workplace. And then we see it on a global scene with the national leaders of the nations. It's all sin. It's all sin because they've taken the foundation and the true Word of God and distorted it. And made it what they wanted to be, and there's no moral foundation. The witness is not there. The witness is not there. They wear their sin as Sodom. Isaiah 3 and 9 says, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. They hide it not. Woe unto their souls, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. The show of their countenance doth witness against them. We see it in the streets each and every day. You've got gay pride marches. They're not ashamed of their sin. Every song you hear on the radio outside of Christian music is about drinking and having sex and drugs and everything else. They just wear it openly. They wear their sin as Sodom. We know, we know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. They were destroyed. They weren't destroyed for their homosexuality. They weren't destroyed for their perversions. They was none righteous. None righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. All those things were judgments on them, just like they're judgments on this nation. They are judgments. And if you can't see the judgment to be in place on this nation, and not this nation only, but the whole world, you better wake up and open your eyes. Because judgment is here. Judgment is here. So Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 talks about six things that the Lord hates. The number six thing He hates was a false witness. A false witness. So when we go out into the world, we have to put on Christ. He is our protection. But we have to be willing to put Him on. Not on Sundays, not on Wednesdays, but 365 days a year, no matter the circumstances, we have to be walking 
by faith. Bearing witness of Him in this wicked world. Because people are perishing. The Bible says, My people perish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Why? Because they already know it all. Romans tells us, For they had the knowledge of God, and by the knowledge of God they knew not God. Because they got too smart, too good for their own self. They knew everything. They went on to seeking out and finding their own religions. That's the world we live in. That's the world we live in. And if we can't stand firm on the Word of God, the Bible says it's Word for everlasting to everlasting. How many other books do you know today that have lasted as long and stood the test of time and still today can pertain to everything in this life? So we have to stand on the Word of God. We have to speak the truth in righteousness because we are witnesses unto God. Proverbs 12 and 17 says, But he that speaketh truth, he that speaketh truth, showeth forth righteousness. Speaking the truth in righteousness. Jesus Christ said, John 17 and 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. A faithful witness delivers souls. How? Through the word of God. Through hearing of the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Romans 17 and 10. We have to be sharing the Word of God with people. In our lives, you can't remember it, but you can live it. The words are in your heart. You can walk that walk through faith. You can walk that walk through faith and be a witness unto God. Be a witness unto Him. Now turn to 1 John. Chapter 5. Verse 5. First John, chapter 5. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Son of God. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. The Spirit beareth witness with our spirit. The Spirit is truth. So if the Spirit's bearing witness with your spirit and the Spirit's truth, truth's going to come out of you. If the truth ain't coming out of you, you need to check yourself. You need to get on your knees and ask God to reveal it to you so that when I leave today, I may be a witness in somebody else's life, but I may be a witness to glorify you, Father. That's what I want to do. Verse 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. There's three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit of God, which dwells within the believer of God. The water... The washing, the washing of water by the Word, that cleansing, that baptism, when you go under the water, when, you, when you're being born again, your, your death and your resurrection, when they bring you up out of that water, the water and the blood of Jesus Christ bears witness to you in this earth. Those three things, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, bears witness for us. And if you're full of the Spirit of God and you've been washed in the water and you've been cleansed in His blood, 
If you've received that atonement, you're going to bear witness to the Father. You're going to bear witness to Jesus Christ, His Son. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be bearing witness. Because I'm telling you, the errors are coming. Satan is amping up his army and he is ready, buddy. He has got the church where he wants it. He's got the world where he wants it. He's in everybody's mind. He's in everybody's pocket. Everywhere you go, he's right there. He's right there. But his time's coming. Today's the day that we need to ask God to cleanse us, to open our eyes and our hearts, to serve Him more and more. We should always have a desire to walk closer to Him and to serve Him more than what we did today. That should always be a constant growing desire. And when everything comes down on you in this world, just remember, He's ready and He's waiting for you. Because if the things of this world supersede your walk with God, you look at you in the wrong spot. Your walk with God ought to be the first and foremost thing and everything else will fall in place right behind it. You won't have to worry about a thing. You won't have to worry about a thing. Our trouble's going to come. Amen. They're going to come. And the more you strive to please God, the more they're going to come. And the harder they're going to be to overcome. But we can overcome them. Because we're here. We're the body of Christ. And we are His body. One body, one mind, one accord. Shouldn't be any schisms. And we are here to uplift, lift up each, each other every day in the name of Jesus so that we can serve Him and be a witness unto Him. That this dying world may see the love of Christ in each and every one of us. That's all I got. Any questions?